So in this video I'm going to go over my Onkyo TX-RZ830 receiver. This is a 9 channel receiver. I've had it for about two, a little over two years I'm going to say. Um, although it's not a brand new receiver, I think there is still value to discuss it because the design language for Onkyo receivers is still uh, basically the same. Uh, the on-screen menu for these receivers hasn't really changed as far as I know. It's rated at 120 watts per channel at 8 ohms, uh, two, channel, two channels driven. It has six 4K inputs. It's not capable of 8K or anything, but uh, I think you know the I, the way to best way to describe this receiver is, is this is very good like home theater receiver. Not terribly good for gaming. It supports all HDR formats uh, for like movie watching. Uh, it supports HDR. 10, HDR10+, and, H and Dolby Vision. I absolutely love the design language from uh, Anki receivers. I know they've had, or recently, they've had kind of a bad rap uh, for quality issues and reliability issues. I, I myself have had two, two Anki receivers that have, uh, that have died on me. One I was able to repair, the other one I was not able to repair. Um, again, this, this receiver, had a, I'm going to go into a little more detail in the, I'm basically going to cover the entire menu uh, system for this receiver and uh, go, over, go over it in great detail. I should also mention that this uh, receiver is THX uh, rated, uh, so that means it's been, it's been tested and uh, certified to, to give a certain amount of performance in a certain sized room. But uh, you know, one thing I'm going to say is, uh, even though I've had some issues with Anki receivers in the past, um, I still like the brand a lot. Uh, I think they make some of the most attractive receivers out there and some of the best performing ones. I've had, I've owned receivers, uh, Denim receivers, Pioneer receivers, uh, and mostly Ankyos. So I do, I do branch out a little bit, but I still keep coming back to Ankyo. I think they make really good products, really attractive looking products that reliably perform well. I should mention that this uh, I have this receiver connected in my rec room, which is a pretty big room. It's, it's about uh, 25 by 35 feet tw ish. It's about that. So it's, it's, a, it's a big room and I have, it has absolutely no issues uh, filling this room with you know great sound. I've been connected to my Golden Ear Triton 2s. Those are my main speakers. A Golden Ear Super Center XL, and I actually I'm using my Triton a Golden Ear Triton Sevens as uh, surround speakers. I have actually six pairs of Polk Audio in ceiling speakers, two as heights, and unfortunately that's just the way it worked out. Uh, I have two as uh, rear surrounds. I know it's not ideal, but this is the way it worked out in this room. So one of the selling features of this uh, receiver is that it is actually Class D. It has it. it it employs Class D amplifiers, which means they're very efficient and uh, play loudly and cool and, and stay cool. So this receiver has an oversized chassis and measures eight inches high, which uh, really gives it uh, like presence in your rack. Uh, uh, I especially like Onkyo receivers that are the, of this size. I don't like the smaller ones. I tend to I try to buy receivers that are at least I would say at least seven inches tall, uh, but this one is a, has a nice eight inch. Uh, footprint, or I mean, or height, I should say, and uh, I really like that about it. So let's go over the front of the receiver. Obviously, you got your power button. You have uh, your you got a listening control knob and tone controls here, so I can go bass or reduce bass. And then you can, if you hit the button, it goes to treble. So I, I'm, I like to keep it flat, personally. Here you can change your your listening modes and flow and f go through them. Personally, I like double see around on most things. Obviously, here's the volume knob, which is very nice and smooth. Uh, it has a little bit of resistance to it, which makes you know gives me that sense of quality. Um, it uh, here are all the it, you have input selectors here from for each individual input. Here you have a net more inputs here. Here's some z zone two and zone three selectors as well. Or you can shut off the zone. Um, I especially like it when receivers have like a like a like a door like here, which ha which allows it to keep its this nice clean look. If you lower this and which actually goes down really nice and smooth, you get you get more uh, options and buttons here, which and obviously an uh, a nice HDMI out. And this is the this is where you would plug in your mic for 
for doing uh, using the auto the auto calibration uh, microphone that's included with the receiver and obviously you got your quarter inch headphone jack as well here you got a, lo a lot more buttons uh, so you can get a little more granular on setting up obviously you're probably going to do most of this stuff on your on your remote control but it's good to have a redundant redundant option here but uh, yeah I think this receiver is nice and clean um, I like that it has like the speaker it tell it has a speaker matrix here and it tells you you know what 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 speakers you're using right now it's set up in 7.2.4 because I have an external amplifier connected to it this this amp uh, I'm gonna go into a little more detail in the menu section of the video but this amp goes uh, this amp supports natively up to 7.1.2 or you can do 5.1.4 and but with an external amplifier you can do up to 7.1.4 which is pretty cool Okay, so I wanted to give you a, biz a look at the business end uh, of this receiver. It's got, as you can see, there's it's got a lot going on. It has six HDMI inputs, all capable of 4K 60, um, two outputs. So there's a zone two and a main out, uh, HDMI out, an Ethernet port. Um, you got some uh, digital coaxial, digital optical, uh, digital audio inputs. That's digital audio, a FM antenna, AM, uh, phono input, which is cool. So you can connect a, a record player to here. A bunch of analog inputs, uh, which can be assigned uh, in the menu. Um, you still have component legacy, le legacy video inputs here. You got straight up analog and component. You have some triggers for like um, you know home you know serious home uh, home automation or probably be very useful if you have a smart home kind of thing they can tap into these and turn it on and off. Okay, so you got speaker terminals. Uh, you have uh, so you got your fronts, the center, surround. That's five, and then you have uh, height either heights and surround back. The surround back can be assigned to height two as well. And then you have a zone two uh, out. So this has speaker connections for nine uh, speakers. Um, this receiver is capable of 11 channels of processing, but you need to connect it to an external amplifier. And, and the ones you need to connect are the surround backs. So you have unbalanced pre-outs. You got your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas here. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty feature packed uh, receiver. Should mention you got two sobo for outs as well. These are kind of like in parallel, meaning that uh, the levels are not independently adjustable. It just mirrors the same signal to both sobo first. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go over the main menu uh, or on-screen menu for my Onkyo RZ30. I'm gonna start out with input, output, assign. And here you can select whether you wanna uh, just send a video to your main main HDMI out or your sub. Well, here you can set, select your zone two to either use or not use. I'm currently not using it because I'm using both HDMI outs. I'm using one's going to my television, the other one's going to uh, my screen capturing device. Uh, on sc you can select your on-screen language and go from uh, German, French, English, uh, Spanish, Italian, uh, a bunch of different languages. You can select whether you want to see your see your on-screen setup on your TV or not. I kind of like seeing it. You can select when you're, whether you want the mini player on. I always leave it on always on. And I always leave my screen saver at like three minutes. Here you can select, uh, you can actually select what HDMI input you want each input to use. You can either shut it off. Or if I shut off one, I could probably select one here. Yeah, like in cable satellite. But I kind of like them in order, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it the way it was. But again, you can do that here. And video input, I actually have this set to component. I don't want, I actually don't need that on. Here you can select your, uh, you can assign other video inputs, uh, an uh, e either analog inputs or component. These are video, video is analog, meaning the little RCA, little yellow RCA cable component is the red, green, and and uh, blue R uh, little RCA cables. So for digital audio input, it's basically the same as um, as what I just went through through uh, HDMI. 
let's say I want to go on cable satellite and I can select uh, coaxial digital or optical one or optical two. And you know, if you have something collected with an optical cable and stream and, and you want to set it to Streambox optical one, then that's, that, this is where you would do that. And again, same goes for analog uh, audio. Uh, if I want to, for BD audio, I can go and shut them all off. Actually, I don't have anything analog connected to this receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and shut them all off right now. Or you can leave them on. It doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, having these on uh, does not does not kind of supersede you you using HDMI, so you can just leave these on. The HDMI always takes pre uh, priority. Okay, so this is the interesting stuff for speakers now. So configuration. So this receiver can handle is an, this is a nine channel receiver, so it can actually handle uh, either its maximum configurations are seven. 7.1.2, which is seven main channels plus two at most height channels, and or you can do five main channels and or and five and five and four at most channels. This I have set to 7.1.4 because I actually have an external amplifier uh, connected to it, which allows me to, to process another an additional two channels. Uh, you have to connect them to your to your rear surrounds. So you connect into your rear surrounds and then you can do 7.1.4. So I'm gonna just go through all of them real quick. You can go from 2.1 and you, see, you can see it changes up on the screen there. You can do 3.1, 4.1, uh, 5.1, which is basic surround as, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, yeah, you can do 6.1, which is, which, uh, which is all main channels except a center channel, which I don't know who would do that, but you can do that here. And then this 7.1 adds the center channel. So this is like what you would consider like a full surround system configuration right now. This used to be what you would consider the top of line surround sound system until before to things like Atmos came along. So Atmos or DTSX. Okay, so now we're getting to more at, to Atmos uh, style. We're getting to Atmos. Uh, here it's 2.1.2. So you got two, two main fronts and two heights. And then you're adding a center to that same configuration, 3.1.2. 4.1.2 eliminates the center, but adds two surrounds. 5.1.2 adds uh, the center to that. So you got the 5.1.2, which is, I think is an excellent, it's a pretty good option for, uh, for Atmos. This is like the base Atmos as far as I'm concerned. 6.1.2 again has the six main channels plus two Atmos heights. Again, 7.1.2. Which was the which would be the top? This is one of the top configurations that you can do in this receiver right out of the box. Then you got 4.1.4, which uh, is uh, uh, four main channels, I guess two fronts and two surrounds, but no ce no center. But you got the four height height speakers. There you got the 5.1.4 again. If you do the uh, four height channels, this is the this is the most this receiver can do right out of the box with four height channels, so 5.1.4. Here you got 6.1.4, that again, no center, but six main channels. This is my current setup in my room. Uh, you can change the uh, the type of height speaker that you have. I have top fronts, but you can have top middle, Dolby front, Dolby speaker front, which these are speakers, these are the speakers that bounce, that uh, rest on top of your main speakers and they bounce off the ceiling. Um, don't necessarily recommend those. Uh, I say only use them if you have no other choice. I keep saying that every time. I, I prefer front highs like the way they're here. Uh, but again, I have top fronts, which I have I have ceiling speakers, in ceiling speakers in my, as my top fronts. And the rear highs, again, if you have the the, the speakers that bounce off, the Dolby speakers that bounce off the ceiling, you can have them on the uh, surrounds or you can have them in your backs. It's cool that it gives you the choice. And you got top rear, which is what I have. Rear high, again, what I think would be better, but you know, so let me put them back. So top rear is what I have, because I have, again, I have in-ceiling speakers. If I go down, I have, yes, I have a subwoofer. I have two, uh, I have a top, I have two top fronts and two top rears. I don't have a zone two in this uh, in this room. And obviously speaker impedance, I, my speakers are six ohms, but you can select four or six. So crossover, uh, I have my front set to full, full band because they have integrated subwoofers. Um, this is kind of like how I like it right now in my room. I, I've been messing with it and I kind of like landed here. Again, I, I did run my the, the auto EQ that this receiver has, but I tweaked it a little bit. So yeah, I have my center at 60 Hertz, my, two, my height's at 80, 
My surround speakers, which are actually tower speakers, I have uh, Golden Ear Triton 7s as my towers, my, my, my surrounds. My front speakers are Golden Ear Triton 2s, which are excellent, by the way. I have, have to do a, res a review on those. And my surround backs are also set to, to, to 80 hertz. My LFE channel setting uh, maxes out at 120. Uh, this is where I would recommend it pretty much for everybody. I wouldn't, I would never, I don't think I can, I don't think I can think of an, a scenario where you'd want to go lower than 120. Just leave it at 120. That's where it just should be. Uh, double bass, I leave it off because I have pretty powerful subs. Plus my, my, uh, my tower, my front tower speakers have plenty of bass as well. No need for double bass in my scenario, but there are, there are uses for double bass. Which I will not go into detail here, but there that can be useful. Uh, this show the, here you can mess with the distancing. I didn't mess with it. Uh, I let the receiver do its thing and do all, all its measurements, and I think it was spot on or very close. And I, I, it sounds good to me, so I left it alone. Level calibration here. You're gonna have to wait a second. You're gonna to it's gonna say you're gonna hear some loud tones. Then here you. Anyway, that's pretty loud, but there you can go and like mess with the with the levels for each channel. Okay, so equalizer settings, I've not messed with this. I have it set flat. I haven't felt the need, but you can go in here. You can tweak uh, run in, run EQ for each channel if you want to. So you can just go up and down here if I want, but I'm just gonna leave it alone because I find it okay. Uh, I wouldn't mess with that unless you had a microphone and could actually take measurements to see where you need to add or, or take away EQ. That's kind of like a, I would consider that like an advanced setting. I would not mess with that just willy nilly or anything. So THX audio, here you can set your back speaker spacing. I have mine, mine are farther than four feet away, so I have it set to four. So you can do less than a foot. Uh, it gives you three options, one to four feet, over four feet or less than a foot, which would be weird, I guess. I, I don't think I've ever seen some uh, some back speakers that are that close, but mine are over four feet, so I have it set that way. I do not have a THX Select subwoofer, so I, le I left it on no. Loudless plus on, I actually do like this. Uh, I feel that it, it does, uh, again, it says rich details, it surrounds sound at lower volume. I don't I'm not necessarily always blasting like my surround system in this room, so I leave it on, and I think it does help make things a little clearer. Again, you can play with it and see if you like it. If you don't, then turn it off, but I like it on. Let's go to audio adjust. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't mess with this. Uh, you know, again, this is, has to do with different, multiple different, multi, multi, multilingual TV broadcasts, so I just leave it main. Again, I don't really, I don't even mess with this stuff. Honestly, I just leave it, this is, this is how, how it is by default, so I just leave it there. Uh, loudest management. Again, this is similar to that other that other setting, and I, I like it. I just I turned it on, and I, I, I liked it. So I, I would recommend turning it on if you want. Again, turn it off if you don't like it. This is cool. This um, So if you play something that's in DTS Master Audio, it'll automatically select, like, the best uh, audio. Like, it'll, it'll go to DTS, uh, DTS Virtual X or anything. It'll, it'll select the appropriate... Uh, like uh, mo most modern and appropriate like DTS processing that there is for like a DTS encoded encoded soundtrack. It does this. It also does this for Dolby as well. Um, it like automatically it does the goes into Dolby Surround when I'm playing something that's in True HD or something or Dolby Digital Plus or something like that. LFE level I left it alone. I'm not. I you know that's fine. I don't mess with that. Volume is relative. I like it that way. That gives you the uh, relative to, um, you can do absolute, which is like numbers, like one through 80 something or a hundred or something. Relative is like, you can see if you're close to like reference volume, which would be zero or zero DB. So um, I like relative, that's just my thing. Mute level, you can select whether you wanna do uh, like if you want to go all the way mute or like have a slightly lower mute, you can still hear it a little bit, but I like it all the way because if I'm muting, I'm not, you know, I'm really, I'm committing to my mute. Uh, maximum volume, you can set a maximum volume here. I don't. Power on, I like this. I like to, ha it'll come on. Let's say I was listening at minus, uh, minus 15 and I, it'll when I turn it on, it'll still be there at minus 15. So that I just like it like that. Headphone level, um, 
Again, I don't mess with that. I rarely use headphones on this receiver, but if you want to bump up the gain, let's say you have a pair of cans that are not very efficient, you can bump up the dB on here and maybe you don't have to turn the volume up as much. So that's that's that could be helpful. I don't really mess with this. Uh, that kind of like, you know, alters, tries to match the, the volume level, I think, between different input sources. And I don't, I don't, I just left it at zero, which is by default, I, but you know. So you can hear, you can, like right now I'm using my stream box input. I could change this to, I actually have this connected to an Android TV box. So I could call it Android TV if I wanted to. So this is where you would do that. For, for this particular input, you can select whether you want audio, HDMI or analog using this input to give priority to analog or, or HDMI. I obviously want HDMI, so I'm going to leave it there. PC in fixed mode, I just leave it. I'll just leave that off. And hardware, here in HDMI CEC, is, uh, well, this allows other devices to take control of your of your receiver uh, via the HDMI cable. Let's say you use your you use the smart apps on your television. You're watching Netflix. You want to raise the volume on your TV. It'll sends it sends the signal through the HDMI cable through the receiver and tells it hey uh, and raises the volume on the receiver without having to use the receiver remote, which is pretty cool. Um, it kind of uh, in a lot of cases in a very simple setup, it can eliminate the need for using multiple. Uh, uh, remotes or or using or having the need for like a universal remote even though I really like you know like the Harmony remotes I'm a really big fan of those but audio return channel e eARC uh, I leave it I left it in audio if you turn it off it's not gonna work I actually use the smart apps from my TV sometimes and I can get um, at Dolby Atmos through here using the eARC and I think it's a good feature and auto lip sync it helps on uh, in syncing the uh, between the the video and audio signal, it just tries to sync it a little better, and I think it does work sometimes. So if you if you if you feel that your audio and video isn't quite uh, in sync, then you can try turning it on, and it might help. Might help. So network. Uh, I currently have it on a wired. Again, that's where you do your Wi-Fi. But anyway, this is where you set up your Bluetooth. There's a Bluetooth button on your remote, and on the remote, and there's one on there's you, there's usually one at the front of the receiver in the panel. Power management, I don't have any of this stuff on. So you can set the USB to, to use, let's say you have something connected uh, to your receiver using the USB plug in the back. You can set it whether you want it to stay on, whether, whether, the, whether the receiver's on or off. Um, I don't have anything connected to it, so I, I currently have it off right now. But you can do that. You can have your Bluetooth, Bluetooth device try to turn it on if you want. I have a feeling this might take up a little more power Again, that's why it's in power management. So if you want to use the least amount of power possible, then you shut off all the, you, you know, you can turn off this stuff. 12 volt trigger allows you to turn on devices using a, a little tr trigger cable. I don't use any of that stuff. My, my setup isn't that sophisticated, but the, a lot of smart home uh, installations use this kind of thing. And it, it allows for better integration, you know, auto, auto integration into like a, a centralized hub or something. Okay, multi-zone. So, so this thing has up to two, uh, three zones. I guess you can just, I, I, I haven't really messed with like the zones or anything, but uh, this is where you would do that. So tuner, this, can, this gives you a frequency step for like AM or FM. Again, I'm not gonna mess with that because it works just fine right now. You can change the remote. I guess it's a different kind of uh, infrared signal. If you go to two or one or whatever, you can, Maybe you're using a different remote. I have it set to one and it works great. So here, this is where you'd update your uh, firmware. Uh, mine is up to date. That's the, ver that's the version. Uh, you can get an, it'll, I would leave this to enable because it'll tell you when the new newest update is available. So this allows you to run like the initial setup from when you bought the receiver. Uh, this could be particularly helpful if you bought this used and you just want to ha have the receiver walk you through the entire setup process. This is where you would do that. This is very important. This could be very important for a lot of uh, users out there. So here you can lock your settings if you want. I currently have, have it unlocked. Okay, so on the on the remote button, there's this button called uh, Quick Menu, which looks like an hourglass or a magnifying glass. Uh, here you can set quicks. You can quickly like tweak your your uh, do some quick uh, changes if you want without having to go into the main menu. 
you can do like a quick center. Let's say you're not, you're, list, you're watching something and you really can't hear the dialogue too well, you can tweak the center. And again, for the subwoofer as well, here you can mess with the audio EQ. You can say, uh, turn on or off the audio room calibration. You could turn on the equalizer, which mine was completely flat. And you can turn on the EQ for standing wave, which I currently have on because I, I ran the auto EQ on the receiver. And other is again, AV sync. Again, this is if you have a serious like uh, lip syncing issue then you can actually adjust the AV sync manually. I usually just have the auto one in the main menu and it works okay. And music optimizer I've really used uh, HDMI out, which I currently have to main, main and sub. If you hit the net button, pull up this screen, and this gives you all the uh, streaming audio options available on this receiver, including Pandora, I guess Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music. I don't know what these are. DTS Play 5, never. Again, this has Chromecast as well and AirPlay. So you can access that through here as well. You can also. You cannot, this, this receiver also accepts AirPlay. You can look through it on your phone. If you've ever used AirPlay before, it'll just show up. And you can play audio through AirPlay very easily. Um, or Bluetooth, whatever whatever you prefer. But it has AirPlay, Chromecast, uh, a music server, which I believe if you, uh, you have to have a server connected to it, some kind of computer. Uh, again, I don't have a server right now connected to it. And you can have uh, music music files on a USB stick as well and have that connected and it should work you know to be honest i really don't use this feature very much or at all or ever i i typically listen to music um i usually just you know airplay stuff to be honest or even bluetooth but when i really want to do critical listening i'll actually put a cd on my old my uh, my retro uh stereo system but that's the end of uh that's pretty much all i got as far as the on-screen uh, stuff for the receiver. Well, if this is your first time watching my channel, welcome, it's good to have you. If you have any questions about the receiver, or anything for that matter in my room, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. It would really help the channel if you liked and subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.